Hi, my name is Mario. Welcome to the inaugural video about R Golang. Specifically, this video series will cover a deep dive about those posts that I find interesting. In this first episode, let's talk about is it okay to pass a transaction in a context value. So this post is by Zimon Rum. It reads, is it an eye-time pattern to pass the SQL transactions as context values through the lifecycle of the request? I am trying to implement a transaction that uses different repositories. Any comment on this? This question mentions the lifetime of the request, therefore it's time constraint. The repository pattern is used, so therefore reusability is important. And last, database transactions are supposed to be working when using repositories. I covered those three items previously, so I will be leaving links in the description of this video, so you can go and see those videos specifically. However, here is a refresher. Repositories are an exception between your domain and the persistent layer, providing a clear separation between them. The context package provides a method called with value used to add arbitrary key value pairs. It returns a new context that you can use in subsequent calls. And finally, transactions execute a list of statements atomically, known as a unit of work. This is the foundation of the asset properties in relational databases. Let's take this information and use a concrete example. This is a really basic role permission user kind of database implementation that consists of a user having many roles and those roles having many permissions. You can reuse those roles for multiple users. The way we are going to be implementing this is using PostgreSQL. Specifically, I'm going to be using the PGX driver. It is most likely you can rewrite this and use the standard SQL database package that you can use with other databases like MySQL. Specifically, this database is implemented in such a way that we have four different tables, one called users, one called user roles, which is the many to many is the connection between the roles and the users. We have the roles table and finally we have the permissions table. So in order to use the permissions, you need the roles, the users with the roles, you need to have a connection with the users roles table. The way I'm implementing this is by defining three different repositories, one for the users because the users live independently. You don't need to know anything about the roles or the permissions that are associated to users. So you literally create users independently. I'm going to have another one for roles and permissions because the permissions need the roles to exist. Therefore, you need to create a role and then you can create permissions. And the third one will be one called user role that is using the user's information and the role's information to create a relationship between them. As usual, the link to the code is in the description of this video. So feel free to check that out. Also, more importantly, I added a link to my blog, a specific post that is covered in this video that describes a little bit more what I'm doing uh, previously to what I'm showing you right now. I want to go through this uh, initial first part quickly because the actual meat of this video is what comes next. So let me show you the implementation of those three repositories. We have an internal package and under that internal package, we have a Postgres SQL package that represents the Postgres database interactions, the repositories themselves. We have a Postgres SQL file that defines a transaction function that we're going to be using in the transactions with the other types that we'll be showing you in a few minutes. We have the user, which is the most simple implementation. It doesn't depend on anything else, like I told you. So there is your typical SQL insert. It goes through a query row, which returns the ID, and then eventually returns back the domain type that I defined before. If we go and look at the role, this is a more elaborated implementation. This role lets you insert roles with permissions at the same time. It's using the transaction function that we defined below. It's calling insert permission tx if i scroll down a little bit you will notice that i have another function called insert permission that inserts individual permissions and is using again the insert permission tx method and finally we have the insert permission tx method that literally inserts permissions so if you notice the two export methods the insert and insert permissions are using behind the scenes this unexported function this is typically one way to do what the user was asking but i want to show you a different way in the second part finally we have the third repository called user role user role is used to add values to the users on the score roles table but also at the same time allows you to select a user that happens to have those roles and return back a complete domain type instantiated for insert specifically is not too complicated it does your typical insert into the user roles table with those arguments that you receive in the method and it goes back and inserts that in a transaction because you are receiving multiple role ids 
The one that is a little bit uh, more elaborated is the one that I have right here for selecting is doing a left join that includes the users, user roles, roles and permissions. So it returns back a full, complete, instantiated user type. Let me show you a few of the implementations that I have in the CMD folder that I happen to be using these repositories. The first one will be for adding users. So if we go and run user main.go Mario, I will create a new user that happens to have this ID. So if I go and refresh my users table, you will notice that it exists right here. So that's okay. Now what I need to do next to confirm everything is okay, let me add a new role. In this role, we're going to call it admin. It's going to have the options to create, update, delete, and read. It's created right here. With this ID, we can go back and verify. We go to the roles area there is an admin and if you notice permissions is also referring to the roles uh, table with the role id foreign key next i'm going to show you how to add values to the users roles table with an array command that i implemented so for doing that we need to take two things we need to take the user role insert main.go we are going to pass in the id which in this case will be my user id and finally, we have to pass the roles, uh, comma separate value of roles IDs. And with that, it says is roles inserted. We refresh this, and you will notice that now we have that. One thing that I also have, and I show you, is in the user role repository, you can actually query the whole thing. You can query the user by its ID, and then it will return everything else. So let me copy the user ID down here. I do a go run CMD and I pass in the ID of the user that was created, and I will print out the whole thing that involves the user ID, the roles, the permissions, and so on and so forth. So in this case, you will notice that it actually has the admin, the permissions, all the create, read, update, delete, and so on and so forth. So all of this is the basic first part of the video. We know how to use transactions, how to reuse some repositories a little bit, some methods here and there in the transaction itself, but what if we get a new requirement that says, hey, I want to implement a new function, a new method, a new repository that happens to be taking a user ID as a reference and create a new user, basically cloning the permissions that the previous user that you are passing in already has. For this, we need to do a little bit of refactoring. And this is the whole point of this video. Let me show you. The key to reuse the repositories internally in our package is to create another abstraction. If I go and modify, for example, the user repository and I add a new type, call it user queries, and I define only the logic that I need for doing the insertion in this case, I can reuse that same type in other repositories. So let's do that. Because we want the queries types to be used for both transactions and connections, we need to add another abstraction. In this case, we're going to be adding it to the postgresql.co file. You can add it wherever you want. But important be, will be to define a new interface. We can call it dbatx that will define the four methods that we use for querying rows, for querying one single row, for preparing statements, and for executing SQL instructions. So let's do that. Now that we have our four methods and more importantly this new type we can go back and update the user to actually receive this dvtx type itself so like i said you can either pass in transactions or you can pass in connections and it will work for this queries type itself and i will show you a more complex example just give me one second this is getting interesting so let's jump in now into the role type and do something similar for role, we're going to be adding a new role queries type. We're going to be scrolling all the way down. And more importantly, we're going to be rewriting this insert permission method that we had before. So it actually works as the queries pattern that we define with the user. Let's do that. And if you notice, we don't need to pass in a transaction anymore because we can use this connection that we define here, which actually has a typo, so let me get rid of this. And then it could work for connections or transactions. It doesn't matter. Let's make those changes. And then we can go up and modify the calls that we have right here. And similarly, we can just go and do the same in the other method that we have above. So 
connection will be the transaction role queries will be now inserting with no tx and everything will should be compiling as you can see down here now it gets interesting because if you notice here this insert is actually defining another query so what we have to do is also extract out this query because we can actually reuse it in different ways so let's do that and it basically is going through the insertion of a row nothing too complicated and we can take this uh, query that we defined right here and use it above in the transaction that was explicitly calling all of these instructions for SQL. Let's do that. Passing the transaction, we called uq insert, we pass in the context, the name. And finally, we don't need these two lines because the role was already returned. Let's take a look at the user role type and do something similar. Okay, so this is the refactoring that we have to do. It may look like a lot of things and most likely you want to pause and rewind this back and forth or go back to the blog post that I mentioned in the beginning, look at the source code that I link in the description and see for yourself. Basically what I did was define a new dbtx interface that happens to use query, query, role, prepare and exec, which are the basic methods that you need for executing SQL statements. Then we went and separated all those concrete SQL statements and created a new queries type that relates to the type that is representing the entity. So we have a user queries, user role queries, and role queries. Next, we are going to be actually implementing what I mentioned in the beginning about cloning this or creating a new user from another user. So this is where it gets interesting and everything comes into place. So let's go and implement that. All right, it's time to implement the user cloner type. And for doing that, we're going to be adding a new file called usercloner.go in the PostgreSQL package. And this is where it gets interesting because we're combining all the queries or most of the queries that we had already implemented before into this new type, which is the basic answer to the question that originally was asked. So let's do that. In order to do this, we're going to be defining a new method. It's going to be returning the new user or an error if anything goes wrong and this is where we can add the transaction but before i do that i want to make another refactoring because we keep adding these transactions and we are actually beginning the transaction outside of the code of the method transaction so let me refactor this because it's getting a little bit redundant so if we go back to the postgresql file instead of receiving a transaction we're going to receive a connection and in here the connection will be the one beginning the transaction and we are going to be making another change right here instead of using a function with no arguments we're going to be defining a function that happens to receive the transaction that we just created so let's continue what we were doing before we're going to be finding the user according to the id that we received we're going to create a new user and we're going to be adding the permissions for that new user and then return it back so we can see the new cloned user so let's do that Next, we need to use the other user query type to create the actual user. So we found the user, we created a new user. Next, we need to add the roles. Let's do that. We just added the roles. Now we need to find the new user with the roles because remember that these are different. So we actually have to call this again. So the user found will not be a new variable but actually the same but in this case will be user new dot id let's go through the steps so we find the user we insert a new user using the new user we insert the new roles and finally we look for that user that we just inserted so we get all the information so let's implement the final command and run everything so you can see how this works for this one i cheated i already have this implemented but i want to show you the process and how this works so we're going to be using an ID, which is the ID of the user we want to clone, the name of the new user, and just execute it and see what happens. So if you recall, we had a user called Mario with this ID. What we're going to be doing, we're going to be creating a new user. When we clone it, what it's going to be doing is taking the information from Mario and create new records in the database. So if you notice, it's a new 
ID is in your name and it happens to be using the roles that we had before, but there are different records in the database. So if we go back to the database, you will notice that if I refresh the users, the user Luigi is right there. The user roles are right there. You notice that it's the same role, but it happens to be using different IDs and it's still the roles and the permissions didn't change because we are reusing what we had before. Pretty cool, right? And that's it. Thank you for watching the first ever Argoland Asks video in this new series. If you have any post that you want me to look at, please let me know. I'm on Twitter or you can pick me or tag me on the post itself. I can take a look at that. I have more posts to go through and this probably is a little bit longer. Please, I encourage you to read the blog post that I link in the description. Please go back and forth between this video, rewind, fast forward. And also, and more importantly, look at the source code that I also put in the description. So again, thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Take care, stay safe, and see you.